All right, guys, this is major, major news. Biden just made a presidential announcement on live TV, right? This is a major escalation, and this is bringing us very close to World War III, right? This authorization and this announcement that he just made on live TV, this is big, all right? This is bringing us closer, and... We need to say no. We need to say we don't want this because it seems like they are pulling out all the stops for 2024. It seems like they might just start a giant war to avoid 2024 happening, right? That's the situation that it seems like we're happening. We have a few things cooking up, all right? We've been talking about this bird stuff going on, but it seems like they might start a giant war too. To avoid this all right so let's get into the details here guys please hit it up for me down there i'm posting every day keeping you guys updated on this big news all right so let's get into this this is what biden was saying on live tv he was saying this today on the anniversary of d-day all right so this is a big day and he is announcing that world war three is coming next Right, they're remembering World War II, and he's saying World War III is about to happen. So, this is big, and we don't want to be sending our young people overseas. We don't want to be doing that, right? We don't want to send our children over. We don't want to send our vets over that already came back. We don't want that, right? My dad was a veteran on a 100% disability and passed away related to his injuries, right? And that's what Memorial Day is about, mem remembering the people that have lost their lives. And now they are about to send more Americans into the battlefield right now, All right, That's what this is leading towards. So I want you to listen to this video really quick of Biden, all right? This is what was just announced today, live TV on ABC News. He was being interviewed on D-Day, and he is saying that the U.S. is now entering World War III in a direct conflict scenario. I want you to listen to this really quick. I wanted to ask you about Ukraine. I, I know for years you resisted the idea of American weapons being used for any sort of direct strike inside Russia. But we did witness this shift in recent days, authorizing American weapons for limited direct strikes. Are American weapons being used right now inside Russia? They're authorized to be used in proximity to the border when they're being used on the other side of the border to attack specific targets in Ukraine. We're not authorizing strikes 200 miles into Russia. We're not authorizing strikes on Moscow, on the Kremlin. Let me ask you about what Vladimir Putin said last night. All right, so you heard that Biden said that he is authorizing strikes on Russia. He said not on Moscow, right? But he said he is authorizing strikes on Russia. He made this announcement on live television on D-Day, right? So this is a very significant step this was a planned event right because it leaked out a few days ago that this was going to happen but now he's made it official he is saying it. it's coming from his mouth and he made this announcement on tv that u.s weapons are going to be striking inside of russia right and in response to this this is why i'm, I'm telling you guys it seems like they're pulling out all the stops to not have 2024. They will do anything. They'll start a giant war to shut it down. All right? It seems like that's the situation that we are moving towards right now. And it's very dangerous. Right? And also, in response to this, Russia is sending warships to the Caribbean for drills. All right? So, right after Biden made this announcement, Russia said they are now sending warships and aircraft that are expected to arrive in the Caribbean for a military exercise in the coming weeks and a Russian show of force as tensions 
rise over Western military support for Ukraine, U.S. officials said Wednesday, right? So things are escalating. This ship is also expected to make a port call in Venezuela and Cuba, right? And they're saying that this is to exemplify their military capability, that they can be right at the U.S. doorstep as well, right? We do not want to get into this tit for tat, and we already are. And this is a major escalation. Russia is now declaring the United States a, quote, enemy as well. This is the first time that this has happened in Russia's history, right? Maybe in the Soviet Union, but the first time they have called the U.S., quote, enemies, right? So this is big. Biden is authorizing this, and this could be the thing that shuts down 2024, and people aren't ready for it, right? People aren't ready for people don't have an appetite for it nobody wants this nobody's ready for this nobody wants this war nobody wants to fight nobody wants to send their kids over i i i'm in the age range i could be called over there all right hopefully that never happens i have a family i have a newborn i have other kids all right i have a wife i have a homestead to take care of all right i have a lot of stuff on my plate here i'm not going anywhere i'm not going over there Right? They actually just passed a law, too, that young men will be automatically registered into the military services. This was already a law where you have to do it yourself, right? the selective service, but now it's automatic. Right? We have the UK saying that they're going to announce a military draft. We have Australia saying that they're going to allow foreigners to serve in their military. We actually had a senator a few months ago and he was announcing that they are going to look into giving quote migrants citizenship if they serve in the u.s military they're looking to draft these people into the military right so they're they're doing this stuff for a reason it's all happening at the same time for a reason and it seems like they're prepping for a major war right a major war they're telling people to get to find bunker locations in Germany, right? They're warning people, find your local bunker and figure out an evacuation route to get there as quickly as possible in case of an event, right? They're hyping up this war machine and this is what they do. They profit off war. They profit off of these blood crises, all right, and they use our men and women as disposables. All right, we need to stop this. This is not what America's military and economic might is for. It's not for fighting World War III. It's for protecting us against World War III. It's not for getting involved in the middle of World War III. It's for protecting the United States homeland, fortifying it, and making it so strong that we will never be attacked. We will never be invaded. And look at what's happening at the border right now. The country is wide open. There's military bases that are being invaded every, uh, there's three or four of them a week, All right, A top colonel came out last week and he said he's extremely worried because there's four nationals. He said there's three to four foreign nationals per week that are infiltrating U.S. military bases and probing them, seeing the response times. One of them, they drove a car in and the car blew up, right? And they're trying to get past barriers and ramming into barriers and being hostile. Some of them are going in and refusing to leave, right? There was a foreign Chinese national that was at a military base last month refused to leave didn't talk to anyone and wouldn't give any info and they had to forcibly remove him and he just entered the country a few days before that all right so this stuff's happening these probes are happening and think about it if all of our soldiers are overseas even the national guard they're always doing training overseas 
deploying thousands of soldiers, hundreds of soldiers that are National Guard domestic U.S. soldiers to protect the homeland. They're always being deployed overseas. If we have all of our troops occupied in different regions, then the U.S. homeland is vulnerable. It's open and it's wide open right now. We should have our military on our border, right? It shouldn't be on everyone else's border. Why isn't our border, our U.S. military protecting our country and stopping this, right? Every single day there are thousands and thousands of people entering the country unvetted. We don't know who they are, right? We only have the database. We only have whatever database we have to check them against. And if they're not in the database and they come up clear, right? If they've never been interacted with before, then they just, they come up good. It's clean. We don't know who you are, so it's clean. And there's also tons of fake identities and things like that that are happening as well. All right, so the country's wide open. You need to be getting prepped. You need to have cash, all right? Every time I'm at the grocery store and it's asking, oh, you want some cash back? I just get a 20 back. I get some cash back and just add it to the stash, all right? So you have some cash back because... Look at all these outages we're seeing. We're seeing cell phone outages, 911 outages. Last year, actually, in the last year, there was a cyber attack on the automated clearinghouse, which clears all of your direct deposit banking for your checks, all right? If you get paid from direct deposit, that was tied up. And I remember there was a notification on people's banking saying that these funds from this date, I think it was like November 10th or something, or October 10th, sometime around that time. It was October, November. And it was telling people for a month or two straight that the funds from this certain day are not available. And it took them over a month to get these things cleared up. So if you got paid on that day, you just didn't get that check for a whole month and you were struggling. And some people could have got evicted they could have got their car repossessed, their power turned off from that, all right? So have some cash, it's critical. The FDIC just warned a dozens of financial institutions that these major financial losses, over $500 billion in losses, are going to be hitting the banks soon as well, right? And a lot of this is due to real estate devaluation in commercial sectors all right a lot of banks and lending institutions they hold the bag for commercial real estate all right and a lot of these buildings that used to be worth 10 million 20 million 50 million dollars nobody works there anymore everyone works for home and this building is essentially just a liability you're just paying to maintain it and there's been a ton of financial crashes going on in commercial real estate and that's been causing a lot of financial losses being reported on the balance sheets for these banks and for these lenders right because it used to be worth 10 million now it's only worth 3 million that's all they can sell it for and there's a huge loss of equity there and a lot of the commercial real estate. Think about it, all the strip malls that have just shut down, all the normal malls that you used to be able to go to, a lot of them are closed, shut down, or they're empty, there's barely anyone in there. That means people aren't paying. Think of all the restaurants that are shutting down. There was, there's been 100,000 plus restaurants that have shut down in the past few years, right? This is a economic assault a physical assault overwhelming our country, overwhelming our social services with people coming into our country. And there's also a kinetic war that's brewing up as well, All right, So get prepared now, get ready now. It seems like they're pulling out all the stops for 2024, All right? You need to be ready for whatever they're throwing at us. You need to have food preps, you need to have a generator, you need to have water tanks, right? You need to have satellite phones, satellite internet, 
communication, multiple forms of communication, wired, satellite, cell phones, right? There's three right there that you can use. Ham radios are also going to be critical in these emergency situations. Have food stockpiled for your animals, for your pets, right? I'm always stockpiling a ton of chicken food for the chickens because the food can go quick and before you know it it's out and you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you only have one bag of food left and you got 30 chickens that are hungry you got 20 chickens and you don't know what to do right they're going to eat this food within a week within a few days and systems are down or offline all right and we're going to see these cyber events ramp up too all right, these cyber attacks, cyber events, whether they're real or they are false flags taking advantage of the situations that are bubbling up, right? They're going to affect you either way. So you need to be prepared. You need to be able to be buffered from these things and have alternative preps ready to go. Right? You need to be able to de defend yourself, defend your family defend your property that's critical because in the aftermath of one of these big events all right if we see some some kind of big event happen in the war theater in the economic zone in the disease zone all right the stuff we've been talking about any of these things if they pop off we could see societal chaos as well all right people are on people are agitated right now people are on edge right now things are expensive there's all this political turmoil all this crap going on people are upset okay and if one of these big things happen we could see people really losing it i remember in 2020 when all this stuff was going on people were like really upset there were people I remember this one guy um, followed me to a gas station, right? And he was so mad because I passed him, right? I just passed him on a road, backcountry road, going slow, nobody around out in the middle of nowhere, passed him. And after that, he started going fast. He followed me to the gas station. He was freaking out. He's really upset. And thankfully, I was able to de-escalate it which is a critical skill to have you also need to be able to protect yourself and defend yourself in case people like that can't be de-escalated sometimes it can't be de-escalated and you have to protect yourself right defend yourself but thankfully is able to be de-escalated and that was one of many things that was just one of the main ones that i remember because i was like this is like this guy's following me through the gas station this is crazy like, what the hell's going on and I, I was realizing people are like very stressed out. People are on edge right now. All this stuff, all this chaos. People were freaking out. They didn't know what was going on, right? And we could see a similar event, a black swan event happen again. And people are even more on edge now. The economy is even more in a worse spot. Inflation, everyone feels the pressure right now, right? So try to prep for your neighbors for your family all right try to get your preps in order but then maybe have some extra all right because people are going to be upset your friends your family that didn't listen when you told them you've been telling them for five years that they should at least get some food and they didn't listen they're going to be upset they're going to be stressed out because everyone kind of knows something's going on, but some people aren't listening. Some people are putting their head in the sand. They're not listening to the warnings. And that's the easy thing to do, all right? When you're, it's cognitive dissonance. When you're given two conflicting ideas in your head, a lot of the times people will choose the less stressful option. So if it's like, all right, we're on the edge of this big event, we need to get ready. It's kind of stressful to think about. It's less stressful to just say, hey, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm going to put my head in the sand and it's whatever. 
And a lot of people, most people will just choose that option, right? Not saying that you need to be worried or fearful, right? But you should be aware, vigilant, and ready, okay? So thank you guys. Please hit it up for me down there. I appreciate that. Helps to get these warnings out so people know what's going on. This is big that he's coming out and saying this on live television. That, yes, the U.S. is going to be using their weapons to hit inside Russia. He said, oh, it won't be 200 miles. I mean, what if there were weapons hitting inside the U.S.? As long as they're not 200 miles in. As long as they're just hitting the coast. Or hitting the beach. And it's okay, alright? This is a very slippery slope. And we need to push for peace. We need to pray for peace. Right, because that's what the world needs right now. Peace, healing. And that's what we're working towards. Growing your own food, homesteading, spending time with your family, having big families. All right, we're a family of five now. We want to have even more kids. Right? We want to grow even more food. We have a ton of chickens. We want even more animals. We want to grow more stuff. Right? That's what it's about. That's how you fight back and win against this system is creating your own systems that are local and that you control you have control over it you have power over it all right so thank you guys i hope you have big blessings for your life your family and i hope you have a big old blessed day